With just over 12,500 cases of COVID-19 reported across Canada, including 219 deaths, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is expected to announce more financial support Saturday aimed at helping the most vulnerable Canadians cope with the pandemic. This is as health care workers, grocery store staff, transit drivers and food delivery workers are hailed as heroes for providing much needed services. How are they reacting to the outpouring of goodwill from citizens? We're now joined by Dr. Ruki Ogumba from Ontario, Canada. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. Hello. All right, thank you. Um, what is the situation now with patient care at the hospital where you are? Well, it's, um, it's pretty much the same. We are all... Um, I know I look very scary, but this is uh, almost the full protective gear minus the hazard suit. You can see I got my shield and taking them off, so you can take a little bit of a look at me. Uh, this is the goggles that I had, and uh, this is my face mask. And then you can see I have my gloves. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm currently reporting from um, Brampton in Ontario, and um, the situation here is, is pretty um, calm at the moment. We just had a few new cases today, and um, in the province, a total of about 29 deaths and about about 3,000, uh, just over 3,000 cases. Currently, the social distancing is working. Um, they are letting people in to this particular facility one person at a time, having been screened on the telephone to protect us, the healthcare workers, because obviously we are the front line and we are very much at risk. And some people who have tested positive are actually in self-isolation at the moment. Moment. And the good news is um, some of these people who are not very unwell can still work through something called telephone consultation so they can help triage patients that are coming um, with suspicion of um, COVID because there's a questionnaire we have to go through. Um, as you know, there's um, shortage of testing kits all over the world and not everyone is getting tested that they should. And we really need to know the herd immunity by checking those people who have actually tested um, positive in the past and are now well, so we can know if they can return to work. And that's the other part of the testing that we need to be doing, which is the serum levels of the um, um, COVID-19 um, in previous infection. How is it impacting us? Well, healthcare workers, um, my nurse, nurses are there. We're all fully kits. We try to protect ourselves from um, contacting the virus uh, via patient contact, where we must still see them. As you can see, we're, we're in, in at work at the moment. Um, we're trying our best to to encourage people to keep those rules that were established by WHO and the CDC. It means wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Don't touch your mucous membranes. Um, wash your hands for 20 seconds. That's really important because we know the virus um, has to go through a, a means to enter your body. That is via your mucous membranes. And so either you're breathing it or you're drinking or putting it to your mouth or touching your eyes. And so this is the way the virus is transmitted. And if you can avoid that, even if you came in contact with the virus and you, even detergent or simple mild soap actually kills the virus, you will not catch the virus. Okay. Um, um, at the end of the day, we are just... Okay. Yeah, so the main, the main okay. thing we're doing in Ontario is actually preventing new cases. And it seems to be working at the moment. Although we are still thinking by May... There may be the peak, we're still expecting a peak by May, but we've closed the borders. We have restricted going out of your house to once a week for grocery shopping. We're saying that if you're feeling unwell, you need to report via the telephone um, helplines, and then we go through the questionnaires, and if we think it's COVID-19, then we were going to test you. Where you are now, it's been projected that 80,000 new cases might um, be uh, on as of um, April 30. How worried um, are you about these um, figures being put forward by healthcare officials? It's very, very concerning because obviously our systems will be totally overwhelmed if we do have those 80,000 cases, but we're preparing. Um, the truth is the, the borders are closed immediately, and so there was a lot of fluid movement at the initial stage. Right now, the borders have been shot completely from international travel. Um, and everyone coming back to Canada, who is a resident of Canada or Canadian citizens, must go into self-isolation for 14 days. This is a law, and if you break it, it's going to be serious. So whether you're asymptomatic or symptomatic, you must go into isolation. Now, with this 80,000 new cases prediction, we know that 
most of the people will recover from it, in, even if they do get the virus. So we're saying try as much as possible to have an already good state of health because that predicts how you're going to react to it. We know that majority of the deaths, over 90% of the people that have died all over the world are over 60 years old. Doesn't mean that young people have not died. Inter-provincial travels was something that was taken for granted now, but we know that there are tougher restrictions being put in place. How is this helping with managing the spread? Do you think it is working, really? It is working reasonably um, because it's very difficult to enforce these rules. Now, the, law, the new law in Ontario, if you're coming to Ontario from a province, no matter whether within or without um, international border, you must isolate for 14 days. So any returnee into Ontario now must go into isolation for 14 days. So you can't go straight to your job, no matter how essential your service is, if you've just come into the province. Before I let you go, this uh, quick one. Um, everybody's concerned about how fast we can get um, a vaccine. Do you think we are any closer than we were a month ago? And how hopeful are you that this will be in the nearest future? To be honest with you, um, there's some hope about the vaccine because, like we can see, over 80% of the people recovering. So we know that um, that it's you know there's the natural um, reaction to this virus is pretty good. But when it's devastating, it's devastating. Um, vaccines won't come until at least we're talking minimum six to eight months, and there must be clinical trials to see how safe they are. All right, Doctor, um, thank you very much for your time with us. We know you're very busy, so we appreciate your sparing uh, this time with us on um, the news. Thanks again. Thanks.